Hey gang and welcome to this series where you're going to learn all about the Tailwind Just-In-Time Compiler. Alright then, so a new feature that came fairly recently to Tailwind is the Just-In-Time Compiler, or JIT for short, and what this Just-In-Time Compiler does is generate styles on demand as we use Tailwind classes during development, and it tree shakes the unused classes or styles from the generated style sheet. And that means during development our style sheet file size is going to be much, much lower. Now, the just-in-time compiler also comes with some added features that aren't available without using it, such as extra variant classes and the use of arbitrary values in custom classes, which the just-in-time compiler can generate on the fly. And we'll learn more about those features later on. But first up, let's set Tailwind up in a project and see exactly why we need the just-in-time compiler for a better development experience. Now, just very quickly before I start, this is not intended to be a beginner's guide to Tailwind CSS, and I do assume that you already know the basics. If not, definitely check out my Tailwind beginner's tutorial. First of all, the link to that is going to be down below the video. Anyway, to begin with, I've got open a very simple project in VS Code. It's just an HTML page with a bit of content inside of it. Some buttons, a bit of text, some LI tags, etc. Now, I'm going to preview this in a browser by using a local development server, and to do that, I'm using a VS Code package called Live Server. Now, you can install it by going to your packages down here and searching at the top for Live Server. And you'll find this package right here, and you just need to install that. Once you've done that, you can right click on any HTML page like this one and select Open with Live Server. So once I've done that, we'll see the page in a browser looking pretty terrible at the minute. So let's add Tailwind CSS to style some of this. Now to do this, we'll be using the Tailwind CLI via NPX, which has just got a complete rewrite for Tailwind version 2.2. And using the Tailwind CLI means we don't have to install Tailwind as a dependency in our project. It does mean though that you'll need Node.js version 12.13 or higher installed on your computer. Now to check that, just type in node-v in a terminal and hit enter. Now if you see a version number smaller than 12.13, then you'll need to update your node version. Now you can do that by either using a node version manager or by going to node.js.org and downloading the latest version. Anyway, once you have an up-to-date node version installed, you can use the Tailwind CLI. Now the great thing about using the Tailwind CLI is that we don't need to make our own custom CSS entry file which includes the Tailwind directives and pulls in the different parts of the library. All we need to do is specify an output file when we run the command. So let's give this a whirl. In a terminal, type npx tailwind css, then hyphen o, then dot forward slash build forward slash styles.css. So the O flag right here means the output destination, which we specify right here in a build folder and then call the file styles.css. So this is then going to pull down Tailwind and pipe it into a styles.css file and it's going to put it inside a build folder. And notice we haven't had to install anything here into our project. We're just running Tailwind from the web using npx. All right, so now we can see this new build folder on the left and inside it is going to be the styles.css file. And this is the full Tailwind style sheet in its entirety. Now, if we scroll down, you can see exactly how large this is and it also comes with a hefty file size. All right, so let's have a look at this in action by hooking it up to our HTML page. So inside the head of this page, I'm just going to create a link tag and the href of this tag is going to be to forward slash build forward slash styles dot css. And now in the HTML body, let's just add a couple of classes to these headings. So for the h1, I'm going to add in a class, first of all, of text hyphen for Excel to make the text a bit bigger. Then also text hyphen blue hyphen 600 to make it blue in color. And then finally a class of font hyphen bold to make it bold. All right, so for the H2, I'm also gonna add some classes. This time, first of all, it's gonna be text hyphen size hyphen 2XL. So a bit smaller. 
then text hyphen gray hyphen 500 and then finally font hyphen semibold cool now i'm also going to add a class of p8 to the div surrounding these just to give it some padding and also a class of text hyphen center to centralize everything on the page all right so now if we preview this in a browser we can see all of those styles so everything's working fine but we're loading in all the classes and styles from tailwind the entire library of them just to use a handful of them during our development and if we open up the dev tools and click on network I'm just going to refresh the page so we can see all the requests. And when we do that, we can see this style sheet right here. So this is the Tailwind style sheet we're loading in, and we can see it's a whopping four megabytes, which is an awful lot considering we're only using about seven or eight Tailwind classes. Now, when you build your CSS for production, then you're probably going to be tree shaking a lot of these unused styles out and you'll be reducing the file size significantly. But during development, it's normally going to remain pretty big and that can cause a bit of a lag in the dev tools. And this is something that the new just in time mode can fix. It can progressively rebuild your CSS as you develop to only include the styles and classes that you use in your templates. So during development, it's going to significantly reduce the file size of your CSS and also by the end of it you'll pretty much have a production ready CSS file which contains only the classes you need. So I'm going to show you how to use this just in time mode in the next lesson but first quickly I want to show you how to add your own entry CSS file for if you need to add your own styles on top of Tailwind ones. So if you want to add your own styles on top of Tailwind you'll need to add your own entry CSS file into the mix. Now before, when we used the Tailwind CLI to generate our output file, we didn't specify an entry file, so it just automatically pulled down Tailwind for us and piped it into the output file. Now though, we'll create our own entry CSS file, which is gonna pull down Tailwind for us and allow us to add extra styles ourselves. So let's create a source folder, first of all, and then inside that folder, create a file called styles.css. All right, so inside this file, we need to use three Tailwind directives, which pull in different parts of Tailwind. So the first one is at Tailwind base, and this is kind of the CSS reset part of Tailwind. The next one is Tailwind components, and this is for component classes. And then finally, at Tailwind utilities and this is for the utility classes so this is the basic setup of a tailwind source file which brings in all of the different parts of tailwind css and now as well we could also add our own css rules in here so i could create a class called testing which is maybe going to make the background a light gray and maybe also it could add i don't know a two pixel border which is going to be solid and dark gray. So now when we process this file using the Tailwind CLI, it's still gonna bring down all of the Tailwind CSS, right? But it's also gonna add our own CSS to the output file as well. So let's do this. Inside a terminal, now I'm gonna type npx, then Tailwind CSS, and then this time, dash i, and then the path of the source file, which is dot forward slash source forward slash styles and then hyphen o for the output file which is going to be dot forward slash build forward slash styles dot css so the i flag here is for the input file location and the o flag again is for the output location so we're using the tailwind cli now via npx to process our entry input file into our output css file so now let's hit enter and wait for this to process all right, so now that's complete, Tailwind rebuilt this style CSS file in the build folder using our input entry file this time. And if we open the file, we can still see all of the Tailwind rules. But if we search in this file for testing, then we can also see our own custom rule as well. So this is how we can use the Tailwind CLI with an entry file as well. So we can add our own custom rules on top of Tailwind ones. But we still had the same problem as before. 
If we take a look in the browser, in the network tab, we can see that the file size is still around four megabytes, which is huge. So next up, we'll take a look at the just in time mode to reduce this file size significantly. By the way, if you want to watch this entire course now without YouTube adverts, you can do. It's all up on the NetNinja website, netninja.dev. You can buy the course for $2 to get instant access to all of it, or you can sign up to NetNinja Pro and get instant access to all of my courses without adverts, as well as premium courses not found on YouTube, including my Udemy ones. That's $9 a month, and you can get your first month half price when you use this promo code right here. So I'm going to leave this link down below in the video description for you to sign up. And I really hope you enjoy this series, and please do not forget to share, subscribe, and like the videos. That really helps a lot, and I'm going to see you in the very next lesson. Thank you.